question number 38 talks about uh, uh, how many ways there are to arrange the letters in the word Tennessee versus the number of ways to rearrange the letters in the word Vermont. Now Vermont has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. Tennessee has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine letters. So at first you might think that uh, there's more ways to rearrange the word Tennessee than Vermont, but because Tennessee has repeated letters, um, it complicates things a bit because you wouldn't be able to tell with these four E's if they've been sort of rearranged to make the word Tennessee, let's say, with, with the E's in a different order. Well, there's a formula for counting the number of, uh, it's called distinguishable permutations. So if you take the word uh, Vermont, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. The, uh, if there's no repeated letters, it's 7 factorial. 7 factorial is just uh, 7. I could take 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or I could actually use the uh, factorial command here. Five thousand forty. Now for Tennessee, we count the number of letters one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That goes on top. But we have to divide. The dividing counts uh, accounts for the fact that um, because there are some letters that are repeated, some of the words that you get by shuffling around or actually matches to, to other words. So we look for repeated letters. Uh, for instance, the um, there are four E's. So on the bottom we stick an extra four factorial. There are also two N's, so we put a two factorial. Any repeated letters we do this with. And there are two S's, that's another two factorial. Well when you divide uh, 2 factorial is just 2, 2 factorial is 2, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2, which is 24. So this denominator is actually 96. 9 factorial over 96, going back to the graphing calculator, 9 factorial is this. When you divide that by 96, you get the answer, which is 3780. And they want to know, is she correct? So you have to say no, because 9 factorial or 4 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial is 3780 is less than 7 factorial equals 504. And you do want to write a little sentence there, make sure you get full credit, not just have the, the, the two numbers. You need to make a conclusion. So the inclusion, is she correct? No, if you don't write that, if you just write the two things, you're actually going to lose some points. Well, part four, six-point question. One question worth all six points, so you really want to be uh, careful here. In a triangle, two sides measure 6 and 10, form an angle that measures 80 degrees. So I have something like this. And their question is, what is the measure of the smallest angle in the triangle? Hmm. It's an interesting question because in a triangle, uh, bigger sides are across from bigger angles. So there's a chance that the side opposite the 6 is the smaller angle. Uh, I guess there's sort of a chance that the 80 degrees is the smallest angle. If, uh, if this side over here happens to be less than, than 6. Um, there's really only one thing you can do with this information where you have a, 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 a side, an angle, and a side where the angle is included. And that is to use the law of cosines. The law of cosines is a lot like 
the Pythagorean theorem. If this is a right triangle, we would say that this, uh, I'll call this x, we would say that x squared equals 6 squared plus 10 squared. That's if it were a right triangle. It's not a right triangle. It's got an 80 degree angle here. So the law of cosines, which is actually uh, given to you on the reference sheet, uh, right, let's see, is it? The law of cosines is given to you on the reference sheet. The way it's written on the reference sheet is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Uh, personally, I would have written it as c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c, and that's how I'll write it here. Basically, the um, the angle that you're taking the cosine of is the angle that you know. The side across from it, if you're calling it cosine A, the side across of it is side A. Um, so the way you do this is x squared equals 6 squared plus a squared. It doesn't matter what you call A and B for mine or what you call B and C for theirs. Minus 2 times 6 times 8 times cosine 80. So doing this, you'll be able to figure out how big uh, x is. Um, so the missing side squared, or the side across from the angle squared, is equal to square of one side plus square of the other side minus 2 times the product of the two sides around the angle times cosine, in this case, cosine 80. I'll run that through the uh, calculator. So um, 6 squared. plus 8 squared minus 2 times 6 times 8 times cosine 80. Make sure you're in a degree mode if you're going to do this. We get that, but we have to take the square root of it, and we get our answer for the side, which is 9.13. Now, that's not the answer yet to the question. They wanted to know what's the smallest angle. Well, the smallest angle is not 80 because 9 is bigger than 6. So the smallest angle is the side opposite the 6. For this, we need something called the law of sines. Also given to you on, um, on the reference table, it says a over sine a equals b over sine b equals c over sine c. Basically, what it says is that I can say x, which is what we want to know, over sine 80 is equal to, um, not x, sorry, we already know x. I meant 9.13 over sine 80 is equal to 6, which is across from the unknown angle, sine y. Raise this over here to make room. You can see why this is a six-point question. Cross multiply, get 6 sine 80 equals 9.13 sine y. Divide both sides by 9.13. Uh, 6 sine 80 divided by that number. I'll just 6 times sine 80 divided by, rather than type this thing in round it, I'll just type second and, so that way it just takes this exact value or a lot of decimal places. And we get our answer. That's 0.6473 is sine y. To get the value of y, I do the inverse sine of that number. at the angle 40.338. They want it to the nearest degree, so it's 40 degrees. And a, uh, an equation like this actually has two answers. Usually this is an obtuse answer and an acute because sine is positive uh, for angles between 0 and 90 and 90 and 180, but because this is a... Uh, right, so, so this is... So this is 40 degrees, yeah. 
Uh, the other answer, the 140 degrees, that we have to reject because um, 140 plus 80 is already bigger than 180. Okay, <clears throat> well, I hope you enjoyed seeing me do the entire uh, Algebra 2 trigonometry regions from June 2011, or, um, or 2010, that is. If you like these videos, I encourage you, after the Regents is done, to go watch some of my other videos that I'm a bit more proud of, things dealing with the history of math and some of the things that really uh, make math interesting to me. But uh, we also want to pass our Regents exams. So for now, just watch these Regents videos, a few of the Regents coming up. Okay, thanks for watching.